Welcome back. As part of the next video in the module one, let us understand uh, the Databricks notebooks in detail. Uh, what are the different options that we can see in a Databricks notebook and how do we create a different uh, languages, uh, notebooks and uh, so the multiple different options uh, that we can uh, see as part of the basics of the data break notebook uh, so before uh, proceeding if you are new to this channel and haven't yet subscribed for this channel we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notification so let's get started So before exactly jumping to the demo part of the Databricks Notebook, let us understand theoretically what a Databricks Notebook means. So Databricks Notebook is primarily a means for development and executing code interactively on Databricks. That, what that, that means, right? So to interact with the cluster or interact with the data using a programming language, you need an interface or a user interface uh, in between, right? So that's what a Databricks Notebook is. So the Databricks Notebook is a platform where you it will be a UI where you will write your uh, program, where you will execute your program so that uh, it will be sent to the back end and uh, it will be executed in a cluster and you, it will operate on the, with the data. So that's the interface uh, that we can call in a, in a simple way between uh, the user and the cluster and the data. And uh, the intent of this uh, lesson or the intent of this uh, video is to kind of introduce working with the Databricks notebooks and the different options uh, it provides. So what you can expect in the upcoming demo is uh, you can expect how do we create and attach a notebook cluster, how do we execute a cell. So what is cell and uh, how many cells a notebook can have, like how do we create a cells in a notebook. So what exactly the cell means, right, which is a very atomic uh, part of our data break notebook uh, so that we will see. And uh, there are different uh, programming languages that we can uh, use as part of uh, data break notebook creations, uh, like we can use a Python, you can use Scala, R are also a SQL kind of a programming. So let us see how do we create a different uh, notebooks or different uh, languages, right? And also there are something called as a magic commands. So which will be quite handy when we are working with uh, Databricks notebook and uh, make the coding more flexible. So that also we will see. And also there is a SQL command. There is a Python cells. So mostly we will be working with the Python and SQL because uh, Scala is used, but uh, it's very rarely used in the industry, but Python and SQL are the most uh, most uh, predominantly used. And also R is a programming language is, uh, which uh, most of the industry level or the enterprise level people are not using it. But academic or research purpose, uh, most of the people are using it because it is having a good math and uh, statistic libraries. Uh, and uh, that also we will see like a, a Python and SQL and coming to the like MD, right? MD is a, again a markdown cell, which is a part of a magic command. So, that also we will see and uh, finally we will see how do we export or import the data break notebook uh, uh, at last right so now we can get started with the demo so as you can see when we log into the data bricks workspace uh, this is how it exactly looks and it shows the like uh, most recently used notebooks that you are having uh, but apart from that uh, you won't see any any other uh, details here so now let us go ahead and uh, create a notebook. How do we create a notebook is just you can click on new and uh, create a notebook here. There is option so, or you can go to the navigate your workspace where exactly you want to create your notebook and just create a notebook and here you can give the notebook name and choose the language of your preference. So currently I have chosen a language of my preference as Python and created my first notebook called first and which it shows you can see uh, Python language. And uh, you can see also like uh, you can anytime switch uh, to the different uh, notebook. But before switching, if I want to print something, I have to write a Python valid Python code here. So I'm just typing some uh, valid code here. So Python code and it executes. But uh, meanwhile, you can also switch when we actually switch, right? It gives me the warning that it is introducing a magic command. So, so that we will see in a moment uh, like uh, in detail but as you can see it has attacked this uh, magic command and uh, what that what that uh, means is uh, even though you are in sql uh, notebook so if i want to kind of execute this right if i can uh, select 
hello subscribers right so if i just execute uh, it just executes the sql command that means uh, i am in the sql uh, programming language and uh, it is a valid uh, sql uh, uh, script or a program right but uh, even though you are in sql you can even execute the python that means uh, so that's that's the flexibility that uh, databricks command has given us uh, to use multiple programming languages here right so coming to the magic commands right so there are different magic commands uh, like uh, we can convert uh, python uh, notebook to scala notebook like just adding scala as a percentage scala as a thing as a keyword like percentage is it starts with the magic uh, commands uh, will start with a percentage and followed by the whatever programming language you want to convert if you want to convert to sql you can have sql if you want to convert to like python you can add a python code here like similarly like what we did here right so this is how we can like magic bricks are quite handy like uh, magic uh, i mean uh, the commands are quite handy i would say and also like uh, you can also kind of uh, use a markdown uh, magic uh, command which is one of the magic command which is like nothing but percentage md so this actually kind of uh, gives us uh, flexibility to add a uh, html kind of a suppose as you can see here uh, we have just added uh, if you read the code percentage md it start with the percentage md but uh, there are different uh, like uh, unordered list ordered list i am adding and also we can, i'm adding external link here and external image here and also a table but finally when you see the output uh, it displays uh, like a html output so this is also quite handy if you are like working on the documentation right so it will uh, it will be useful for the i mean kind of a documentation that you will be working on right and the next magic command uh, we will discuss uh, regarding the percentage run okay so percentage run uh, is a magic command where we can utilize uh, it when we are calling the child notebook like suppose if i create a new notebook here right new notebook like called second so second notebook uh, I, I can write a code saying that uh, executing i'm just printing executing second notebook right so it just executes and in the first notebook i can just uh, take the say the if you click here and see just copy the file path and go to the first notebook and use a magic command called as percentage run right so and then followed by you can give the uh, exact uh, the command and you can see there will be error so which gives the error so basically we need to kind of add it in a proper indentation with the like single quotes or double quotes let us try which will work here yeah double quotes will work so if you add a double quotes and the the link you have copied the exact link you have copied it will work and also you can try with uh, giving some uh, uh, relative url as well like as you can see instead of giving the entire url uh, or the entire path so i have given the relative path here dot is nothing but a current folder slash second so since first and second are both in the current uh, folder i have just uh, given dot slash second so if you see if i execute this it goes to the second notebook and execute the second notebooks and give the output here right so like let us understand this right like when we are calling this is not just about calling if i declare anything here as a variable right like say um, tmp equals to hello tmp right so if i'm executing hello tmp say for example i've executed this in the second uh, notebook right so in the first notebook can i access that if you are telling yes you are right we can access that the reason is So it will be actually uh, executed and uh, it makes the part of the code, right? So now it is failing, you can see, right? Because I have not executed this uh, percentage run. So once I execute the percentage run, it will refresh and uh, the first notebook knows uh, there is something called as TMP in the second notebook, which is created. So now if I kind of execute it, it is still, still not executing. The reason is, so here there is an error saying that it is not a valid uh, code so let me convert into python code so why i am converting to python code here as you can see this is the sql notebook 
right either we have to switch to the python or you have to convert this uh, sql uh, command to the python command so you, now if you execute right you can see there is a hello temp that means uh, whatever you declare in the second notebook right which is called from the first notebook all the whether you create a variable whether you create a table temporary view or any kind of view that you will be creating will be automatically part of the first notebook so it's it's pretty much executing like it's pretty much same like you are declaring the variable here itself right so hope uh, this is uh, i mean useful and understood what is the concept of uh, calling the child notebook or the second notebook uh, from the main notebook and uh, one basic details uh, we want to show you here like uh, when you are executing a cell so this is a particular cell right you can just uh, create a cell and you can just go on adding the multiple cells here right so these are called cells in the databricks notebook and uh, you can execute n number of cells and each cell can have n number of lines and as you can see like you can there is a command to execute this cell as well okay so if you execute the cell like uh, just let me add percentage python here and then i can show you the execution so how, how can we execute the cell is like uh, you can execute the cell just by clicking uh, run cell here okay and there are uh, like if you see the drop down there are uh, multiple options uh, run all above run all below that means run all above means running all the cells above this cell okay similarly run all below means you have to run, it is we are expected to run all the cells below this particular cell okay and uh, there is an option if you want to run all the uh, particular cells right now uh, you can run click here and click run all so if you click on run all so it will execute sequentially one by one first command one will run command two will run and command three will run and followed by command four and as you can see if the command four is failed okay for any reason the subsequent commands will not execute and they will be skipped right so this is quite important to understand also there are something called as databricks uh, utilities uh, so that will be quite handy when you are navigating the databricks uh, file system basically there will be something called as databricks file system so which is a dbfs if you go to the data here and uh, if you click on create table right so as you can see there is something called as dbfs so like a file store and the tables so whatever tables you create or whatever da data you upload in the databricks right uh, by default it will come to the dbfs which is a file system native to the databricks so now coming back right so if you want to navigate or see what is there in this uh, databricks uh, like a uh, file system right so this will quite uh, come handy like databricks databricks uh, utilities right so databricks utilities if you see uh, it will quite, quite uh, handy like let me change this to python so that uh, you can execute these commands so as you can see there are like different utilities like fs uh, is a file system where we want to navigate to the file system as i was telling right and you can even use the secrets like uh, if you are using a key vault or any kind of us you want to mask the password and secrets right so that you can use and a div utils, utils can also be used to create widgets so we will uh, see in the next coming videos how do we create a widgets uh, in the databricks uh, uh, ui so those widgets can be created uh, you know, like where we can accept the runtime parameters in the notebooks so there are different options so you can just uh, go to the databricks documentation and see uh, like databricks utilities right so if you google out uh, databricks utilities you will see a lot of utilities here so and also you can run uh, dbutils.help so it shows the documentation of it and also you can if you want to know about a file system right so if you just type uh, dbutils.fs.file system uh, fs.help right so it will be able to see so basically you can mount uh, like a blob storage a data lake or any external uh, file system source and uh, you can also use a couple of operations like a uh, copying a file and uh, getting a head of a file listing files creating a directory in the dbfs or any external file system for that matter which is already mounted right and uh, you can move the files you can put and you can also remove the file or directory okay so there are different options that uh, dbutils comes handy uh, right and uh, if you kind of uh, like as you can see it is showing in a not so uh, like uh, if you if i do a dbutils.fs.ls so i need to provide some uh, 
directory name here so as you can see it is showing this way right like just output but if you want to make it more uh, tabular so that it will be more readable right so because if there is a lot of files it makes very difficult to read this output if you do a display of and uh, you can see now it is in a tabular format and it is more readable right so that also quite comes quite handy we would say and uh, so next concept is we can add a repo also like if you are uh, familiar with uh, programming languages you'll be using uh, you'll be syncing the code with the repos right so there is a repo option here if you see and uh, you can click on add repo here okay and uh, you can choose there are different options of git you can use enterprise gate you, you can use azure uh, devops uh, service you can use a uh, aws code commit you can use a uh, bitbucket code or normal github or enterprise github so you can use anyone so wherever you want to store your code and uh, once you choose that uh, so you need to provide your uh, git url and the repository that you want to do and uh, basically one time you need to sync uh, like uh, the code and the repo so this we will show in a detail uh, in a separate video if possible but uh, so there is an option to do this right so if you kind of sync your notebooks uh, so it will be stored a secure uh, it will be stored in the concept of versioning in any git uh, repository right so this is a possibility just we want to show uh, as part of this uh, video basic video so hope this was uh, useful uh, to understand uh, the basics of the databricks uh, notebooks right so and also like there is a new feature which is released uh, as part of the databricks uh, where you can uh, see here uh, we can add a view or comment suppose if you want to add a comment right like it is for a documentation purpose suppose if you, are, if you want to do a code change here right so if i want to do a code change you can pretty much do a code change here and add some uh, comment uh, specifically to that code change okay so that uh, like yeah i mean it will be a more documented way and uh, people who are using it uh, can understand what exactly the changes that you're working on what working on and uh, what exactly changes you want to make right so and uh, finally we will see option right like this is the notebook that we created using this cluster but you can choose uh, if there are more cluster that you uh, uh, that you are created in the workspace you can choose the different uh, cluster uh, also you can switch the cluster also basically you can switch the programming language you can switch the clusters right so there are pretty much uh, different options and also there is if you navigate uh, here right and if you can see there are different options you can see you can upload a file right and also if you see the edit uh, like currently what the display it is the output it is displaying right so it is showing the output and the input both right if you want to don't want uh, the input you, you want to see only the output right it will just able to show only the output here if you give uh, results only okay and uh, if you give side by side right so then uh, you will see the result at the right side and the input at the left side so there are multiple options how do you want to see right so um, yeah so it's all about uh, the databricks uh, notebook uh, like uh, basics right and also like uh, we will uh, show finally like how to kind of export and import the databricks notebook suppose if you want to export this notebook so there is a export option where you can export to databricks archive where it will generate a dbc file and if you generate a source right uh, if it is a python file it ge generates dot py if it is a sql it generates dot sql and if it is a scala it just uh, generates dot scala as expected and you can also generate uh, the notebook in the form of html so these are the different options that you see when you export and uh, similarly if you want to import like uh, you can just click on import and drag and drive, uh, drop the file which you have uh, imported or you can browse that file uh, that you have uh, basically exported and uh, you can import them here right so hope this was uh, pretty useful and uh, thanks for watching so hope it was useful and uh, thanks for watching